Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to Subha Limited Q4 FY22 results conference call hosted by ICICI Securities. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in listen-only mode. There will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchdown phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Aditya Chattopadhyay from ICICI Securities. Thank you and over to you, sir. Good afternoon, everyone. On behalf of ICICI Securities, I'd like to welcome everyone to the Shoba Limited Q4 FI22 results call. Uh, from the management we have with us, Mr. Jagdish Nanginini, the Managing Director, Mr. Yogesh Bansal, the Chief Financial Officer, Mr. Soumya Deep Saha, who is the, now the Head of IR, Mr. Ramesh Babu, Senior VP Finance, and Mr. Vigneshwar Bhatt, the Company Secretary and Compliance Officer. And now I'd like to hand over the call to the management for their opening remarks. Over to you. Thank you. Thank you, Adhidev. Uh, this is Jagdish here. Good evening, uh, everyone who have uh, who are participating in this call, despite it being a Saturday weekend. We are pleased to interact with you today post declaration of our unaudited financial results for the fourth quarter and financial year uh, 2022, ended uh, 31st March 2022, through this phone call hosted by uh, ICIC Securities. Thank you, Aridev and team for organizing this call. We have already shared the operational update of the company in the first week of April uh, 2022. The investor presentation based on the financial audited financial results adopted by the board can be downloaded from the website of our company. We, to start with, I request uh, Mr. Yogesh Bansal, CFO of our company, to take you through the financials quickly before we, uh, before I make uh, additional commentary and open the floor for questions. Thank you, sir. Uh, I would like to welcome uh, uh, all of you on uh, Shoba Army call. So we are happy to announce that Shoba has shown improvement in sales and achieved a total sales volume of 4.91 million cases, valued at 38.70 billion, with a total average price utilization of 7,883 per square feet in FI 2022. This was primarily driven by good sale numbers achieved in Bangalore, Gurgaon, and Gip City. All these three regions recorded their individual highest ever sales. For the quarter, we have sold 1.34 million cases at value of rupees 11.10 billion and highest ever price realization of 8,255 per square feet. Our consistent focus on cash flow and cost management has helped us to reduce net debt by uh, rupees 5.15 uh, billion during the uh, financial year. We are happy to inform you that in this quarter we are, uh, we are able to bring down our debt equity to below 1, as committed earlier to invest the community in the previous quarterly calls. As on 31st March 2022, our debt equity is 0.93. This has been, possi uh, been possible for companies achieving highest ever cash inflow of rupees 12.91 uh, billion. We would like to inform you that our average cost of borrowing has further come down to 8.40 percent as on 31st March 2022. During the quarter, we have launched Soba Brooklyn Tower in Bangalore with super built up of area of 197,096 square feet. Out of our uh, on the planned residential launches of 13.53 million square feet across various cities. Across various cities, we are on track. These launches are expected to further boost our sales in the coming quarter. As on 31st March 2022, we have an unsold inventory of 14.09 million square feet in ongoing and completed projects which we consider adequate in the given market scenario. As on 31st March 2022, we have unsold completed project inventory of 0.37 million square feet valued at 2.91 billion, which is the one of the lowest by industry standards and it's also showing our capability to sell the inventory before project completion. 
if we talk about delivery, we have delivered uh, 120.08 million square feet of developable area, including residential and contractual projects, which is one of the highest in our sector. We have achieved 70% of sales on the area which is released for sale in the ongoing project. Submitted receivable from sold unit stands at 53.87 billion as on 31st March 2022. Provide full coverage for balance cost to be spent for ongoing projects which we offer for sale. So now I will summarize uh, our uh, Q4 2020 performance. If cash flow, if we go to cash flow uh, first of all, we have achieved historically highest total cash inflow of rupees 12.91 billion during uh, Q4 2022. Total cash inflow is up by 32% year on year and 22 quarter on quarter. We have achieved real estate cash inflow of 10.60 billion during quarter for the highest ever since inception. Real estate cash inflow is up by 48% and 26% as compared to Q421 and Q322 respectively. We have generated operating cash flow of rupee 4, 4 billion during quarter 4 2022. The same is up by 71% and 92% as compared to Q1, 40, uh, Q4, 21 and Q3, uh, 2022 respectively. Our net debt got reduced by 3.17 billion in Q4, 2022. We are able to reduce net debt by 7.57 billion in last 10 quarters. If we talk about FI 2022, our uh, our uh, borrowing cost has come down by 64 basis points during FI 2022 and net debt cost reduced by 5.15 billion during uh, FI 2022. We have achieved total cash inflow of 39.82 billion during FI 2022 which is up by 29% as compared to FI 21. Achieved real estate cash inflow of Rupees 31.73 uh, billion during FI 2022, which is the highest ever since inception. The chain is up by 44% as compared to FI 21. We have generated operating cash flow, in, uh, cash flow of uh, rupees 9.20 billion during FI 2022, which is the highest ever since inception. The chain is up by 44% as compared to FI 2021. Now, I would like to highlight sales number. In Q4, we have achieved total sales volume of rupee, uh, 1.34 million cases of super built up area value at rupees 11.10 billion, which is highest ever since inception. Due to consistent demand across the product segment and price increase, we were able to achieve best ever price realization of 8, 000, uh, rupee 8,265 per square feet. Average price realization is improved by 4.5. 4% Q on Q. Sales volume achieved by Gurgaon region is the highest ever since inception. During the quarter, we have launched Brooklyn Tower. So, FI 2022, we, in FI 2022, we have achieved best ever sales volume and sales value of uh, 4.91 million square feet and rupees 30, 8.70 billion respectively. So, by share of sales, when the highest ever since inception, Bangalore, Gurgaon and Deep City region has achieved highest ever sales volume during the FI 2022. Total sales volume and sales value were up by 22%, 23% respectively as compared to FI 21. Sales volume achieved by Gurgaon region is up by 83% as compared to FI 21. We have delivered 4.07 million square feet of developed area during FI 22 in real estate and 3.71 million in contractual. So now I will take through you to financial highlights. In Q4, total income for Q4 2022 stands at rupees 7.60 billion. Real estate revenue for Q4 stands at 5.33 billion, up by 19%. Q on Q and 84% year on year. A big for Q4 stands at 1.19 billion, uh, uh, higher at, uh, by 15%. PBT for Q4 22 stands at 
rupees point three six billion higher by five percent. Fat for the Q4 2020 uh, two times at point two six billion higher by three percent. Total FI 2022 total income for the FI 2022 stands at rupees 27.89 billion, up by 29 percent as compared to FI 21. Real estate revenue for FI 2022 stands at rupees 20.10 billion, up by 53 percent as compared to FI 21. Contractual and manufacturing vertical revenue for FI 2022 stands at rupees 7.20 billion. A bid for FI 2022 stands at rupees 5.22 billion, margin at 19 percent. CBC for FI 2022 stands at rupees 1.58 billion, margin at 6 percent. Tax for FI 2022 stands at rupees 1.16 billion, that is 4 percent. Out of community sales done in residential business as on 31st March. 2022 daily balance revenue of rupees 80.81 billion to be recognized as revenue, which will come in future years. Now I will hand over to Jagdish sir for any further comment. Thank you, Yogesh, for the detailed uh, uh, commentary on the financial results of both the quarter and the financial year. The financial year FY 2021 and 2020, uh, FY 21-22 was a year of executing the learnings from our FY 21 experience with COVID impacted business and operating environment. And even though there were similar impacts in Q1 and partially in Q4, we could recover quickly and perform better, aided by what we believe is a sustainable demand environment. We, as you would have seen, we have improved the performance across all parameters on a continuous basis during this financial year. We registered some of our best quarter figures in Q4 on the back of improved operations and steady sales with positive customer sentiment that resonated throughout the year. Our uh, consistent performance during the year goes on to show showcase uh, customers' confidence in our products and services diversified across cities and businesses. We will continue to focus on our disciplined growth strategy in all verticals of our business and prioritize operational excellence cash flow as we embark on the next growth cycle in the sector. We believe the, our self-reliant business model with an integrated design to delivery ecosystem, proven capital allocation, strong brand equity built on years of customer trust will be the foundation for remaining competitive and sustaining the growth momentum. While we believe the demand environment seems positive, the unprecedented inflationary environment has also caused significant cost increases for everyone and affecting us as well. This might impact margins for us going into uh, going into future, particularly in projects where we have already sold majority of the in, uh, inventory. We we have uh, continued to increase our prices, which uh, we started in the Q3 of uh, last financial year, and we will. It looks like we will need to continue to do that in order to cover up some of the cost increases. The next financial year also seems to be filled with uh, both opportunities and challenges which we are geared up to tackle. So with this, I would like to open the floor for questions. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Pritesh Shet from Motila Loswal. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, thanks for the opportunity and congrats on a very steady set of results. Uh, and improved cash flow performance. Uh, first question is on 
uh, obviously the launches, uh, we have been seeing a very robust pipeline that you have been highlighting since last year or so. Uh, how is the visibility now in terms of uh, launching projects uh, from the pipeline that you have disclosed this year? Uh, and at least, uh, you know, in short term, uh, uh, how many projects we see are, uh, you know, getting on stream uh, uh, for next couple of quarters? Thank you, Tadesh. With regard to the new launches, uh, we have uh, a solid pipeline across uh, uh, some of the geographies which are doing really well, one including uh, Bangalore. Uh, we, in fact, uh, we have, uh, after the quarter, we have already launched two projects in Bangalore, uh, measuring about 1.5 million square feet, and uh, we, would, we would do, so we will continue to do new launches uh, in, in this, uh, in the subsequent quarter. The, the pipeline for the overall launch uh, that you that you have seen in the presentations and which we have been discussing earlier in the calls, they seem to be very robust and uh, we are actively working uh, towards making sure that those pipeline the the inventory comes into the uh, in, into the market as quickly as possible. I hope that answers your question, Pradesh. Do you have any further questions? Yes, yes. Uh, uh, thanks for that. So, uh, whatever uh, you know, challenges we have faced in past in terms of getting approvals, have that been all sorted out, or uh, are we still seeing some uh, slow, slowness in, in, in getting the approval? As far as uh, <clears throat> some of the specific cities uh, are concerned, well, I mean, few quarters ago we had some challenges in Bangalore. Uh, those have been resolved, and uh, currently we don't we do not see any uh, city specific or project specific uh, approval related issues. Uh, okay, thanks. And secondly, on uh, you know uh, the due to rising interest rate scenario, firstly, how is the mix of uh, you know our customers in terms of applying for mortgage versus uh, you know not applying for mortgage, and uh, how is the initial response? Post this particular spike in, in interest rate from the customers, are they a little bit hesitant in terms of making those property decisions, or we haven't yet seen any impact on the segment? No, good question, uh, Tatesh. The uh, as you have seen that RBI has already increased uh, 0.4 percent, and uh, looks like there can be increases in the interest rates going forward. Uh, although that's the uh, the uh, and which would definitely impact the inter, uh, the home loan interest rates too. As of now, if we look at any of the leading indicators towards uh, the, the demand uh, fructification for us, we have not seen any uh, any big impact in terms of the uh, on the on the demand environment, despite this uh, uh, despite this increases in the interest rate. Uh, however, if there are there are uh, uh, there are movements which are more than one to one and a half percent, we might uh, we we will have to actually watch and see if there would be. Considering the current uh, strong uh, job environment, uh, job uh, market, and uh, corresponding confidence in the customers, it looks like uh, that 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 might not factor uh, that might not come in as a factor for uh, uh, any time in, in the near future. Uh, but we'll have to watch and see once if, if the rates move up uh, 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 more than what one anticipates. And any comment on mix? Uh, if you have that number readily available, how many, how much of your customer mix is towards mortgage and uh, opposite? Yeah. yeah, so the overall mix is, uh, we, we typically we have seen for the uh, for, for the ticket sizes of uh, one and a half crores and below, the mix is uh, far, far higher in terms of the bank loan with over 80%. Uh, uh, and for the uh, ticket sizes over two crores to two crores plus, the mix is slightly lower. Having said that, the uh, the overall numbers always are uh, are in the range of about uh, 80%. But the uh, time at which uh, people take the loan 
uh, it, it varies based on the ticket size. For uh, higher ticket sizes, people tend to take the home loans a little later than uh, the uh, slightly lower ticket sizes. Okay, thanks. That's helpful. Uh, all the way. Thank you, Pradesh. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Puneet Gulaji from HSBC Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you so much, uh, uh, and congratulations for a very uh, nice set of cash flows here. Uh, my first question is uh, on the EBITDA margin. Uh, so the margin came in, you know, a bit lower at 16 percent. Is this something that we'll have to, you know, see going forward as well, given the impact of inflation, or do you do you see that price increases will normalize the impact? Thank you, Puneet. Uh, uh, you are right, you're, you have observed it right that the uh, EBITDA margins have come in a little lower than uh, earlier quarters. It's, uh, as you know, in real estate, the, uh, the EBITDA margins, are considered, uh, the revenue is recognized on uh, the handover of the units. Yeah. Uh, in, in the project, in this particular quarter, the, uh, the, some of the projects that where we have recognized revenue, they were of slightly lower margins, uh, being uh, joint development projects. But okay. otherwise, the uh, the margins on the uh, real estate have been reasonably steady. Uh, coming to the contractual and the uh, and the uh, manufacturing side, the uh, cost increases have impacted in the quarter itself. Uh, because some of the cost increases have not uh, could not be passed on to the customers, and hence there has been an impact on the EBITDA margins there. And also the, the 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 some of the land income that we have recognized in this quarter that's not of uh, very high margin, so hence uh, overall EBITDA margin has been low. Going forward, uh, the, it, it it is uh, dependent on the uh, on the on the mix of the projects again that we uh, that we are going to recognize for the next financial year largely uh, the projects where we are going to hand over uh, most of the costs have been uh, baked in and hence the cost increases the impact of it might not be as high but at the same time it uh, uh, it might impact in the projects where uh, we are where we have sold uh, in the last uh, financial year, and uh, the pro I, I, and the costs have to be incurred subsequently in the next couple of years. Okay, so if I 23, you are saying the impact will be not much, but 24 and 25 would see some bit of impact. Yeah, that I mean that uh, that's how we are. Uh, it, it's estimated. Uh, uh, we will have to see in terms of even in FY23, uh, the, also the uh, overall margins and uh, overall revenue that we can recognize because most of our projects currently, because last two years we did not spend, could not spend enough uh, even though we would like to yeah, on the project. Now that the operating environment has become clear, uh, we, we, will, uh, we, we will spend a lot more uh, uh, there, there has been a lag in terms of delivery, uh, and uh, that is, we will capture this, uh, this financial year. And hence, uh, the revenue recognition might take, uh, will improve on quarter on quarter going forward. Understood. That's very helpful. Uh, my next question is on the debt side. So, there's a quite, quite a good decrease in debt. How should we think of, you know, further reduction in debt? We're already 0.93. What is your target for how end FIT please? Uh, like I mentioned, like uh, we have been uh, uh, discussing uh, for the earlier calls as well, the debt reduction is one of the priorities for the company. Uh, and however, we I we think that we have achieved uh, quite a bit of our targets. Uh, in the, in the in the last financial year, going forward, also it's going to be a mix of uh, come from whatever free, free cash flow that that would be available for us. Uh, we would uh, tend to prioritize uh, first in debt reduction and two in, uh, uh, in investing in new opportunities as well. So uh, from a capital allocation point of view, so uh, for, first. Uh, in terms of debt reduction, probably we will look at further reduction and uh, 
from new investment point of view, we have a, a bunch of uh, opportunities lined up, and we have uh, allocated some of the capital for that. And uh, so, so it, it's going to the mix. Uh, the second point is here uh, <clears throat> the the uh, new cash flow that that will come in in the next subsequent quarters. Like I mentioned, the uh, the construction uh, activity would significantly increase in this uh, in, in in this financial year, FY23, and hence a lot of uh, the uh, cash inflow would be allocated to to making sure the projects are, are completed. So. Uh, given that the cash flow availability for the um, for overall net cash flow that would be available would also probably come under uh, might might not be the same as what you have seen in this quarter. Any number you can give? Uh, any uh, target for 23? 23, I would uh, we we are still working on uh, working on the numbers. Uh, I we don't have a target at this stage. Understood. That's it. Thank you so much and uh, all the best. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Samir Bensiwala from Morgan Stanley. Please go ahead. Hi. Thank you so much and a very good evening to everyone. Sir, what's the uh, new sales uh, target for fiscal 23? Samir, uh, the, I, do you think that the uh, the uh, demand environment now after, after uh, significant increase in the last uh, uh, two financial years, uh, particularly in the last six quarters, uh, reached a level where I think it's it's going to be steady. So I I would tend to think that the uh, sales would would remain largely uh, uh, flat or uh, little increase. Uh, I I don't think it's going to be significantly different from what we have uh, this financial year. Okay. Okay, that's that's fine. And the second question is, uh, any thoughts on what could be the collections and the construction outgo for fiscal 23? I know you made some uh, qualitative comments, um, right. but but uh, anything more you you want to add over there? In on construction outflow, uh, uh, Samir, it's uh, it's a more of a definitive number because we have a plan to deliver the uh, all the. The, the projects that, that are ongoing, so I think there will be an increase of about 60 to 60 percent or so in the overall construction outflow, uh, and in the uh, collections of uh, inflow also, I think there would be an increase, but uh, uh, it, it, uh, I, I think it, it will be in the range of at least 20 percent. Okay, sir, so, so voice is not very clear, but so construction spend will go up by 60 percent, and the Inflows collections would be go would go up by twenty percent. Is that what you said? That's right. Sorry, sorry for not being clear, uh, Samir. But uh, yes, you are right. Okay. And uh, the other question is on the contractual business. If I look right. at pre-COVID um, in fiscal twenty, I think we did about fifteen hundred crore odd, and right. now it's obviously come down to half of that. So, right. how is the pipeline building up, and do you think now customers are coming back now that the pandemic is more or less behind us? Right. So, as you know, Samir, uh, we in the, the contractual and manufacturing uh, revenue, uh, we have both uh, the manufacturing uh, units, which contribute about uh, roughly 400 to 500 crores, that would uh, sustain or uh, that that would go back to the COVID level. Uh, but from a con uh, from a contracts point of view, we 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 have seen that there, some of the uh, projects that we have taken have uh, like you see like I was mentioning earlier, uh, we have taken some kind of margin hit. So we are carefully considering the uh, the, the business development activity there, and uh, we are reevaluating wherever the uh, we we have been uh, active in bidding. Uh, so that's something that we are a little bit cautious about. So we will, we will complete the current existing uh, uh, order book that we have. But uh, going forward, we, we are reevaluating uh, how we can bait and what are the opportunities that we seek out to. Okay, sir. And one final uh, question from my side. 
Uh, what's been the uh, sort of price increase, uh, you know, that you have taken? Is it like um, broadly on an average for the portfolio? Is it like uh, mid single digit, uh, you know, on, on six month basis? And how do you see uh, it going forward over next six month period? From a, if you compare from FY22 to FY21, uh, there has been an increase of roughly about six percent, uh, and uh, the going forward also, I think it. I mean, I, I, in most of the projects, we have taken some some uh, price increases, and going forward as well, we, you can expect in FY23 also to have a similar number. Okay, so excellent, and uh, all the best. I've got a few more project-level uh, questions. I'll come back in the queue. Thank you. Thank you, Sanish. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Abhinav Sinha from Jeffries. Please go ahead. Hi, and uh, congratulations on uh, the strong cash flows that we have seen. Uh, so, uh, Jeffries, uh, I just wanted to go back to the sales target. Uh, did you mention you're expecting flat sales? Why or why this year? And uh, I mean, considering the low base of uh, COVID wave two and a bit of wave three, um, is that right? So, uh, Abhina, the uh, sales as as you would have seen, we had done about 4.9 million square foot uh, in FY22, and FY21 was about 4 million. I think uh, this is a sustainable number, even if there is an increase. Uh, I mean, what I was mentioning was that the uh, this five million square feet is a is a number which is sustainable for us. And uh, given our current inventory and the pipeline that we have, this is definitely something which is doable. Anything uh, uh, more would be a bonus for us. But from a target point of view, we would we would roughly try to achieve about in in the in a early. Uh, double digits. Okay, so value wise, only double digit is feasible, uh, considering yeah. pricing is yeah. also slightly higher. Yeah, that okay. means right. So volume wise, volume wise, it will be roughly similar, uh, little bit up, but both uh, volume and uh, pricing periods, if you take, it can be in 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 low double digits. Okay, and um, uh, on the contractual side, uh, uh, you know. Uh, so uh, the the pipeline now seems to be much lower than what it was in the previous quarter, and uh, the run rate of uh, FY22 even is that repeatable, or is this like a wholesale rethink on uh, whether the group wants to do this anymore, and uh, you know you will maybe redeploy the workforce accordingly? Is that what you're thinking? Yeah. So there are two parts to it. First is FY23. FY23, the uh, there would be a uh, definitely an increase in the overall uh, uh, contractual and manufacturing uh, uh, business uh, since we have an order book which we need to execute. As for beyond that, what we are uh, currently doing is uh, what I mentioned earlier regarding the uh, re-evaluating some of the uh, opportunities that we have been uh, seeking out to. So based on how they justify, we will have to we, we will uh, either continue on the current path or we reevaluate the contractual business. Okay, so maybe uh, we will have a better idea for sustainability in a few quarters. Is that right? Yeah, in a couple of quarters, we will have a much better sense as uh, how we we would uh, go about in in the subsequent financial years. Right. And um, one last question, uh, just on the Gurgaon project. So, A, uh, can you tell us how much inventory is now there of villas which is left? Uh, and B, uh, any uh, you know any timelines on when the new project uh, with Karma One can be launched? So, the, the uh, on the existing uh, inventory, we have about uh, more than. Uh, a million, uh, one and a half million square feet for us uh, in uh, Gurgaon. Uh, and uh, corresponding to the new launch to Karma, we are uh, still awaiting some of the clarity from from uh, uh, from a licensing point of view. Uh, once we obtain it, then I'll, we'll be able to share uh, share the definitive uh, timelines with you, Abhinav. Right, but Hyderabad should be likely this year. Yes, uh, Hyderabad. We are uh, we had been working on uh, the uh, 
doing a launch. We had more. We are we are in the last leg of approval, so hopefully we should be able to do uh, quite soon. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Mohit Agarwal from IIFL. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks for the opportunity and uh, and great set of numbers. Uh, heartening to see a good debt reduction this quarter. Uh, so my first question is on your uh, business development strategy. So how how should we look at you know uh, adding new projects uh, into new geographies, or are you just going to focus on uh, utilizing your land bank? So any color on that? Can you provide? Sure, Mohit. Uh, real estate in in the uh, new business development it's a, it's going to be a mix of uh, how we are planning to go ahead one as you know we have a reasonably good land bank uh, we our first priority is to invest in the uh, uh, incremental investment that's required for this uh, land bank to monetize it in the form of a project or in terms of a uh, uh, best utilization of the asset at that point of time uh, so in that regard, some of the projects we have uh, already conceived and we would like to, uh, we, we, they are going to come up as projects in the subsequent, uh, this end of this uh, financial year or early early next year. Uh, I am correct, uh, and that's a continuous process uh, wherein we, we, we continue to invest on our uh, uh, existing land bank to make sure that the, they, they come up as, as projects. If with respect to the new uh, pipeline that we create in terms of uh, uh, deals, we we are on it in terms of uh, evaluating uh, multiple opportunities uh, across cities. Our focus cities will continue to be our uh, uh, current operating locations, which is uh, Bangalore, Pune, NCR, and uh, some bit in Chennai as well. So in addition, uh, in addition to this, if there are any fantastic opportunities in new locations, uh, we would see it. But our first priority is going to be on existing operating locations where we have already have a uh, team set up and uh, brand recognition, and uh, uh, we understand the operating environment pretty well. Okay, and so any any outflow that you've planned both for you know your existing land bank. Uh, to make it more monetizable for this year. So what kind of outflows are you looking there? And also any target that you have for uh, investing in JVJDA uh, projects that you just mentioned that you'd be looking at some opportunities in the existing locations. We, I, I will not be able to share exact numbers for that, but uh, it's an ongoing process where we, uh, we evaluate opportunities and invest. Uh, so hence, uh, <clears throat> but but definitely this year we will look at uh, investing in new opportunities uh, uh, in, in the in the cities that we operate. Uh, okay. okay, okay. So just a last one on this. But uh, is the investment in the own land bank is it going to be a significant outflow this year? Uh, no, that's uh, the, the existing land bank. Uh, there are two sets of it. Again, uh, some ba some land banks which are. Uh, which we can monetize uh, uh, much quicker. Those, I think, the incremental investment is uh, going to be uh, has to be done more in terms of permissions and uh, uh, and conversions. So that's not going to be significant. Uh, and the second one on the land bank, which which will take time for us to actually rectify and uh, monetize. Those also, it's, 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 there is going to be an investment, but that's going to be incremental and uh, and, and long term in nature. In the sense, it's not going to come uh, everything at one shot, but it's going to come periodically. So, uh, so both put together, it's not going to be a very large large investment, but uh, there will be an incremental in nature. Sure, thanks. And sir, my second question is on your PNL. Uh, we are seeing your PNL, your interest cost in the PNL, uh, you know, for the for FY22 was about uh, 750 crores. Now your cash outflow is about 300 crores, and there is a notional interest uh, that you show of about 450 crores for 22. Uh, if you could give some color on that, is this recurring in nature, uh, and is this something that uh, you know, if you could throw some light on whether your listed peers also do the same kind of accounting, if anything on that, if you could share. So, so Mohit, 
this is in days requirement so we have to compulsory show that uh, yeah, notional interest in both sides as well income as well as expenditure okay so this will be recurring sir uh, on that is going to be recurring so so yeah. mohit what uh, yogesh is mentioning is that this uh, this component this amount consists of uh, majority of it is uh, notional uh, financial cost not the actual finance cost no actually the actual uh, if you got if you have to look at uh, actual finance cost and understand it our uh, uh, investor team will reach out to you again and probably explain that sure sure sir thanks a lot and that's all from my side thank you mohit thank you the next question is from the line of kunal lakhan from clsa please go ahead yeah hi thanks for taking my question uh, my first question is on your uh, slide 15 in your presentation uh, on your cash flows now when i look at your uh, balance construction cost of 87 billion against uh, unsold stock value of about 100 odd billion uh, there doesn't seem to be much room to uh, you know increase uh, the cost to offset the Uh, offset uh, to increase the prices to offset the increase in the cost. Like, you know, if there's a 15 percent hike in the cost, a 6 percent uh, increase in the prices will not will not really you know offset the impact of increase in the cost. So, how should we look at this going ahead? Like, you no. Know, uh, and firstly, like, you no. Know, do we have uh, 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 the room in our portfolio to increase to take you know to undertake such price hikes uh, uh, in in the market? So, So Kunal, thank you for the question. We, you're right. I mean, the, there is the outstanding what we have receivables on that is mentioned as uh, about 5,387 crores. Uh, so corresponding to that, we have uh, we, we have a balance construction cost of about 4,800 crores. So you uh, from there, this is all receivables and and any any increase in that cost that outflow will uh, have an impact on the margins. You're right. No, so actually, my question was on the overall portfolio, the total column that you have, uh, which is like you know your uh, total outflow to complete the the entire uh, uh, you know ongoing portfolio is about 87 billion versus 100 billion of you know unsold stock value that you can you know get from even the area which have not launched so far. So, you know, so what I'm trying to ask is like if the Kunal is in your case, so 100.64 is. Uh, Uh, unsold stock value, whereas 53.87 we have to receive from our outstanding receivable. So 153 we have to look into minus 87. This includes so uh, 100.64 is unsold stock, which we are not sold as of as of date. Correct, correct. There is there is there is construction cost includes units where which we have sold also, not constructed. Correct, correct, and there is no scope of any price improvement or price increases on those units, right? So entire price increase will only happen on your unsold stock, actually. Unsold stock, right? Have, correct, but you have a total cost of 87 billion estimated on your entire ongoing projects balance cost, right? So I'm saying that they are almost like your balance cost is 90% of your value of unsold uh, inventory that you can fetch, right? So there isn't much room there in terms of like no. Uh, passing on the entire uh, cost inflation so so it so it just seems like you know it will be very difficult to like yeah, there is a 15% hike in construction uh, practically you have to increase the price by 15% on your entire portfolio to uh, stay beta neutral so or margin neutral so just trying to assess like you know whether you know we have the ability to increase prices by by that scale um, if the cost increase by that amount well uh, uh kunal the if you look at the projected sales value of unsold stock right because 8720 includes the uh, it, it, it is an ob- it is for the completion of the unsold stock as well where uh, we have uh, about 6000 uh, 6000 crores i think that that's where we have a room for improvement so so there is there is uh, we believe that there is enough room for us to uh, to offset that
Okay, sure. Uh, my second question was again on your guidance side. Like, you know, so value you said in terms of value, low double digits, but in terms of uh, volume, you said like flat or marginal growth, right? Uh, now, again, like, you know, considering like last year, there was some deadlock in terms of launching new projects, uh, which is uh, which is not there as of today, like you said. So, uh, and we have 13 million square feet of new launches uh, planned. So just trying to understand that, like, you know, uh, how do I reconcile this? You know, because the new launch, uh, the 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 up approval pressures are not there, so new launches should come through. But at the same time, we are guiding for a flat volume for FY23. So uh, is uh, my mind is other 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 way to ask this is are you seeing some pressure, uh, or are we seeing or, or are we seeing the market softening overall? Well, uh, the uh, Kunal, they, they, what we are factoring in. Uh, which probably uh, we are being a little bit more practical or on the cautious side is uh, because of the price increases they and uh, some of the additional supply coming in the market uh, in in the in the last uh, few quarters and uh, probably going forward given the strong demand environment they might there there might be a, a chance that uh, we, uh, we 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 would uh, we, we, we would do these numbers which I'm projected. If there are no such challenge, I mean, if, if the demand environment, if, if the price absorption is better than what we are uh, looking at, then definitely we can do far better. So this is, uh, we, we, I would like to be a little bit cautious in terms of uh, uh, how I, uh, how we project our outlook. It's uh, uh, the way, the reason why we are, uh, I'm, we are saying it's uh, probably flat volume or uh, from a value point of view, it's not too high. Is, uh, is is largely because of the uh, price increases that we would like to do in order to protect our margins. Uh, having said that, new launches of course create a certain kind of uh, increased demand. So if there is a pickup there, then they, that that would be additional bonus. So uh, ne what we would uh, what we are seeing is still a strong. Uh, uh, demand environment, no doubt about it. Uh, hence, first our focus is to make sure now, uh, considering the last two financial years have been good in terms of the quality of sales, uh, first priority is to make sure that the the cash flow that, that we, we intend to uh, uh, spend on the construction is uh, is, is protected and our uh, and our continuous uh, focus on the uh, on the cash flow remains the same, so that we we continue to generate net cash flow uh, on a uh, positive on a on a uh, on a continuous basis. Second is also to make sure that the the margins are also protected. So hence uh, I I would uh, considering the high inflation environment, we would like to protect the margins as well, and hence we are probably being a little bit more cautious on the volume. I, I, we, we will be okay if we do similar or slightly higher volume and uh, value, uh, but uh, make sure that our margins are protected. Just let me want to clarify one thing. So are we saying that you know, we could be cautious in terms of new launches this year, not because of maybe approval deadlock, but because of like the cost inflation? Or do or should, should we assume that new launches this year would be higher than last? The launches are not a factor of any kind of uh, caution. Uh, the launches would happen uh, as we planned, but uh, the offtake uh, from the new launches with the kind of uh, 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 slightly higher prices that we have uh, uh, priced at uh, might, uh, might 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 cause uh, might not uh, lead to the demand which. Uh, which is, which is the, the demand velocity which we, we would have, uh, we can anticipate in the in the in the last uh, financial year. So overall, uh, the volume we don't see that there would be an issue, and uh, value also is not an issue. But uh, from a oh, the, from a, uh, a significant jump in terms of the new sales, that we we are. Uh, I, the financial year doesn't look like it's going to be significantly different from last financial year. Sure. Thank you so much. That's helpful. Thanks. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Parvez Akhtar Kazi from Edelweiss Securities. Please go ahead. 
Hi, uh, thanks for taking my question and congratulations for a great set of numbers. Uh, uh, sir, you did mention about, uh, you know, geographical diversification and, and where you would like to, uh, you know, improve our geographical footprints going ahead. But uh, I mean, as a medium term strategy, uh, do we uh, expect any kind of significant change in terms of contribution from Bangalore over the medium term to our sales? And today, you get maybe about 70-75% of sales from Bangalore. What would be this number, let's say, three to five years down the line? Thank you, Parvesh. So, current, the current mix uh, of the sales, uh, Parvesh, is entirely dependent on the uh, inventory and the pipeline that we have. So the current uh, inventory that we have and what the, the visibility that we have, if you look at those and what we are planning to do in the, in the next, I mean, subsequent financial years, is it's very clearly we, we would like to diversify a little bit more. And uh, the mix would, uh, uh, although it, Bangalore would continue to dominate the overall uh, mix, but the, I, we would expect, I would, we would expect and probably target for uh, increased, uh, of course, sales, but at the contribution of Bangalore coming down uh, by at least uh, 5 to 10 percent, which is, uh, which might be about, right now it's about 65 odd percent, it might come down to 50 to 55 percent uh, going forward. But it might not happen in the, in the immediate future, but over, uh, over the next few years, definitely we see that happening. Uh, and, and which are the areas which will probably contribute higher for us to be able to achieve this target? Well, uh, that is a uh, slightly uh, uh, diverse. Uh, multiple cities can contribute to those. Uh, like I mentioned, our uh, current focus uh, markets would, would be uh, currently where we are already operating. I think uh, Kerala. Uh, uh, Pune, NCR, and, uh, City and Chennai, is once they start contributing better, then definitely their uh, share would increase and uh, uh, Bangalore's would, uh, uh, from a mixed point of view, overall, but we still think that the, the, the volume and the value from Bangalore will continue to be uh, same or go much higher from here. Uh, sure, sir. Uh, that's it from my side and all the best. Thank you. Thank you so much for this. Thank you. In the interest of time, this was the last question for today. I would now like to hand the conference over to management for closing comments. Thank you, uh, everyone, for, uh, for participating in the call. As you have seen that the uh, our focus for the last financial year and which has reflected in the last quarter as well is uh, absolute focus on uh, cash flow management and which which has in, which has definitely helped us improve our own operational efficiency that with this learning we would uh, go forward in fy23 as well and uh, we think that uh, our th these learnings will help us uh, continue to achieve a much better uh, uh, financials and reduce our uh, debt further and give us opportunity to invest in new, op uh, new uh, uh, land opportunities across India. Uh, so uh, if, we, uh, if we look at a uh, long-term uh, plan, so our plan is to, <clears throat> like I have mentioned earlier, uh, is to have a disciplined growth strategy and that's uh, the, that's the uh, path in which we would uh, go on. And we, I think we are, we have set up the right set of environment and the uh, uh, thinking and strategy aligned uh, across businesses and uh, teams to make sure that this uh, this gets executed. Uh, given that we are very positive in terms of how we take up the uh, the execution of of the of this uh, strategy, and uh, uh, we look forward to uh, deliver. Uh, extremely positive performance going forward. Thank you. Thank you again. Thank you very much. On behalf of ICICI Securities, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your line.